at the end. Okay, so again, we're graphing functions with a limited domain and we're graphing functions with a domain of all real numbers. So two parts to our objective for today. If you look on page 260 at problem number one, it shows us to graph the function number one is 3x minus y equals one, and it gives us a domain of negative three, negative one, zero, and four. That's my D there, sorry about that. That means we're gonna make an XY table on our binder paper, and then we're gonna use our graph paper to graph the graph that goes with it. If I'm making an XY table here, They've given us the domain or the x values, which are what? Um, negative three. Negative three, negative one, zero, and four. Yep. Negative three, negative one, zero, and four. And we have to figure out the output here. But I can't graph it. I can't use this rule in this form. This equation has to be equal to this value for it to be a rule. So I'm going to rewrite it over here and we're going to do some moving around of the pieces of this equation so that we get the y by itself. We're going to subtract 3x first. And keep in your mind that famous equation y equals what? mx plus b. We want to get this minus 3x right after the equal sign. We're sliding these into their appropriate places. And because the negative 3 is with the x, that makes the negative 3 the m. So then we have negative y is equal to negative 3x plus 1. We have to divide by negative 1 because the y is still not by itself. It has an invisible negative 1 in front of it. It's negative is there, but the, the 1's invisible. Remember, when I divide these things, I have to divide all parts of them. So negative y divided by negative 1 becomes a positive y. Negative 3x divided by negative 1 becomes 3x. positive 3x. And what's going to happen to our positive 1? Negative 1. Okay. What's our rule now? 3x minus 1 is our rule. And we're going to plug in our x values. So that we can get our y values. This is going to be negative 9 minus 1 will be negative 10, negative 3 minus 1 will be negative 4, negative 1, and then 11. Now that we have our xy pairs, we need our graph paper. I'm going to have to zoom out quite a bit so you can see both. The first thing we want to do with our graph is we want to label it with the problem. So put down the page number again. You guys are going to have a lot of graph paper for many chapters in this book. You need to be really good at labeling things because if they get separated, you want to be able to get them back together. You can even put up here that this is 4-4. Problem one, negative 3x plus 1. And what do you think the title of the graph should be? It's the equation. And we want to put it in the y equals form. So y equals our 3x minus 1. And we're going to start with, at the origin, go negative 3, 10. I'm sorry, negative 3, negative 10. And then negative 1, negative 4. Zero, negative 1 and 4 all the way up to 11. This graph only goes up to 10, but we can kind of guesstimate it's going to be right about there. I'm going to use a card as a straight edge because I like nice straight lines. I will get some rulers out for you guys in a moment.
Okay, let's try number two together. Let's go back to our binder paper, which in this case we're doing in our spiral as an example. I'm going to write down number two. This one doesn't have a y, it has that fancy version of y. f of x is equal to negative absolute value of x. And it's giving us a domain again. I'm just going to take the domain and put it into an xy table. The domain is negative 5, negative 3, 0, 3, and 5. This time they gave us 5 x's to input. Our rule is negative absolute value of x. And you can write y here, or you can do the fancy version that's in our equation. We are going to put the negative symbol in front of the absolute value and then put the number that's over here in. Something happens every time we graph absolute value functions and I want you guys to see what's going to happen. What is in front of this absolute value symbol? Negative one. So anything in here is going to become positive, but once we pull it out, we have to multiply it by a negative one. So all of our outputs on this are going to be negative. negative. This is going to be negative five, negative three. Oops, one of these is not negative. Zero. Zero is just zero. Look at our outputs. They're sort of symmetrical, aren't they? Yes. yes. Negative 5, negative 3, what's the center point? Zero. Let's look at what happens when we graph it. Again, we want to label that this is problem number 2. We want to put the equation up here, f of x is equal to negative absolute value of x. And we're going to take the values in our table and we're going to graph them. Negative 5 to negative 5. Negative 3 to what? Negative 3. And then we get 0 and? So that's graphed at the origin. And then positive 3 down to negative 3. Positive 5 down to? Absolute values always graph as a V. If they're positive, they'll be up. If they're negative, they'll be down. I'd like you guys to take a look at number three. We're going to skip it, but I'm just going to write it down here so we can talk about it for a moment. f of x is equal to x plus 4. It's giving us a domain. And the domain or x values are negative 5, negative 3, 0, and 4. What's my rule? x plus 4. What's my output? Either y or? Raise your hand if you know what to do with that. You're going to put negative 5 plus 4 and get its value. Negative 3 plus 4 and get its value. And then you're just going to graph it. I think this one is really similar to number 1, except we don't have to move the equation around. And it just happens to have this fancy thing instead of a y. So if you want to work with that on me later, we will, but I think that that's something most of you should be able to do. I'd like to spend time instead on number four. The equation is y is equal to x squared minus one. And it gives us a domain of x values. There's five of them. Negative three, 
negative 1, 0, 1, 3. We're going to take our rule out of the equation, and what is it? X squared, the first one. X squared minus 1. So I'm going to put negative 3 squared minus 1. Negative 1 squared minus 1. Oops, I forgot the squared. 0 squared minus 1. 1 squared minus 1. And? 3 squared minus 1. Okay, so negative three times negative three would be twenty-seven. No, you're thinking cubed. Oh, 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 sorry. There's there's a thing here about the negative though. Am I going to be doing negative oh. 3 times negative 3? Yeah. Yeah. Or am I going to do 3 times 3 and then multiply them times negative 1? I want you guys to talk to each other about why you think it is what you think it is. What do you guys think? Second one. First one. Okay, the first one would be nine. Minus one. Minus one would be eight. The second one would be three times three is? Nine. I meant nine then times three. Times one would be? Negative ten. Yeah. It'd be negative nine. Because this would be nine times negative one. I'm going to actually pause here because I want us to explore this idea and this video is getting a little bit long. We'll come back, okay? 